So Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Lou DiBella for the latest DiBella's Digest. And Lou, as is customary, I have to ask, how has your week been? I got to be honest, Danny, like, you know, 2021 has been more of the same shit. Um, no, really seriously, like, I mean, I was, I, I entered, you know, New Year's week thinking to myself, well, I know we're still in a pandemic, but maybe we're turning a corner and things are getting better. And they're just not here. You know, they're just not. And um, lost a few friends this week. You know, uh, Fred Levin today, I found out about who is Roy Jones, old manager, a big lawyer in Florida. Really nice man. I did a lot of business with him for a lot of years. Um, the law school at University of Florida is named after Fred. Um, he won a landmark case against the tobacco industry uh, that was historic. I mean, a real accomplished guy. Uh, he was 83 years old, but if not for COVID, he'd still be around. Um, you know, and uh, uh, earlier this week, Mike Acri, who was Hector Camacho's promoter, Duran's promoter, Paul Spatafora, uh, a friend of mine for nearly 30 years, um, died of cancer. So it, it's just, you know, it's been a just a really rough year and change, and it hasn't gotten so much better so far in 2021. But you know what? Got to keep your head up and be grateful for what you have to be grateful for and and keep hoping that things improve. Well, please accept our condolences, of course, uh, guys that we're all going to miss, particularly Mike Acree from the boxing community, of course. <laughs> Yeah, Mike was a colorful guy. He was, a, I mean, he was really a good boxing guy. You know, he, Mike sort of semi-retired. I mean, Mike made a lot of money, and I used to joke that he probably had the first dollar he ever made. He was still, he, he never really left the 80s. He was wearing members-only jackets in, like, 20, you know, 20, 20 2016. Um, but uh, a really good guy and, and, and an honorable guy. And, I mean, his boxing mind was amazing. His eye for talent, his understanding of what makes a good match and a bad match and, you know, who should be put in the ring with each other. He was a really good resource to a lot of people. And even after he sort of semi-retired young, um, he was a guy that a lot of us in the business, even on high levels, you know, would, would consult with now and then because of his, his boxing IQ. Um, so he, he will be missed. And, uh, you know, boxing industry took a lot of hits in, uh, in the past year and change. And they, they just seemed to keep coming. I mean, talking of good fights, we're at that stage now where promoters, despite the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, have just started to announce fights for the early part of 2021. Some full schedule, some just, you know, a few fights here and there. One that's captured my imagination I wanted to ask you about is Carl Frampton challenging for a world title in a third <laughs> weight class against Jamel Herring, a very accomplished champion. I, I love that. I love that fight. I love that fight. I'm a big fan of both guys. I, 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 I consider both guys to be friends. You know, I, I'm a big fan of both guys and um, both of them are admirable people uh, outside of the ring. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I said this on social media the other day and it's no one's fault. I mean, if I was Carl, I'd be very happy. I'd be, I'd be I'm fighting in, even though I, I understand he's Irish, uh, I'd be very, I'd still be very happy. I'm fighting in London and not the U S I think that'll be, something of an advantage to him. But that's the kind of fight. The reason I think it's going to be an advantage to Carl is because I don't see a domination by one fighter in that fight. You know, I, I, I see a competitive fight. Um, I, I might, I, you know, I, I just on experience and level of opposition he's faced, I might give a slight edge to Carl, but that's counterbalanced by the reach and length. And I, I think, uh, I, I, I think Herring's a little bit bigger. Um, and, and I think that will advantage him slightly, uh, certainly a little bit longer, um, you know, in terms of reach and such. I, I love that fight. I, I think it's going to be a really good fight, a really competitive fight. And, um, you know, I, I'm wavering on my, I've been wavering on my prediction on that one. I haven't made it yet. You said you, what, 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 what's the date on that? I've lost track of every, I, I've lost track of time. February know. the, I want to get this right. Twenty. Uh, 24- Fifth, I'd have to double check, but it's definitely the, the last week of February, I believe. Um, no, Belina says hello. Um, I, I, I'm looking forward to it. I think that'll be a great fight. I'm also looking forward uh, to that chocolate Tito Estrada fight. Has that been confirmed though? Because I saw some stuff today, kind of speculating that maybe it hadn't been fully signed and sealed yet. 
Yeah, I mean, if Mr. Honda said it's going to happen, then, you know, and Kimmy said it's going to happen, then I believe them. I mean, there's nobody in the business whose word I trust more than Honda-san. So, I mean, I saw the I saw the stuff that said that uh, it wasn't signed yet, but then I saw something where Kimmy said it would get done, and if Honda says it'll get done, it'll get done. I mean, I'll watch Chuck Latino no matter what, but that, that fight is one that I've, I've been waiting for and I'm looking forward to, like most hardcore fans. You know, I mean, look, I think we're doing the right, starting to do some of the right things. The matchups I'm seeing now are much stronger than matchups we saw last year uh, to start the year. So I, I think it's a good thing. I don't think, you know, a lot of these fights are more inside boxing kind of fights, like where the, the real knowledgeable fans and hardcore fans are the guys more excited, but that's still good. I mean, we need to, we need in general, if a casual fan tunes in to a fight that's a competitive fight, fought at a high skill level, they're going to be responsive to it. They're going to enjoy it. It's going to help our sport. So uh, I, I think we are heading in the right direction with some of the announced matchups for, for 2021. And is that one also that you're wavering on, or do you have a firm pick for the rematch between Chocolatito and Estrada? You know, there was a period of time where I thought Chocolatito was slipping. But Chocolatito, the last few fights has looked more to me like the Chocolatito of old. Um, I mean, I can't bet, you know, it's like picking against Manny Pacquiao or something. You know what I mean? It's just like, you know, I think it's any, it, it's certainly a fight where the outcome is in doubt, but I'm not picking against Chocolatito. But what do you think? Um, I would back Estrada, I think, just about. I think uh, Chocolatito looked really good against Cal Yafai kind of a redempt not redemptive rejuvenated performance from him really impressive. I could see I could see why you're you're, you're picking Estrada and and Estrada is fresher and there is going to be look little guys can't keep fighting till they're 40 it, it just doesn't work I mean they you know um and, and particularly a guy like uh like like Roman who's been in so many like wars um he's gonna it's gonna happen soon where he is he's not gonna get past an opponent. Then Estrada is certainly one of the best guys out there he could be fighting. I just, maybe it's emotional, but I just don't want to pick against Chuck Latino. I, I think it's anyone's fight, but I don't think it's a fight I'd sit there and make a, a wager on. I think I'll just enjoy it as a boxing fan. And just, Tess, you mentioned earlier you consider both Brampton and Herring good friends and, and you really like both guys. What is it about them and the way they approach the business, their characters, that, that kind of sets them apart and makes them such great guys? they're just both grown ass men <laughs> you know what i mean they're just there's no little kid there's no there's no uh they're gentlemen but they're they're gentlemen but they're, they're principled people um they both overcome some stuff and had some issues but but uh for the most part i think they both you know carry themselves with dignity and uh you know jamel's uh look i love jamel he's a, f a former marine um and and i also i promoted some of his fights when he was with PBC um, and he had some rough breaks and, and, and uh, you know, a, a loss and, and, and he took that self doubt and he turned it around and he hooked up with, with Bomack and Crawford's camp. He became a better fighter. He improved dramatically in a short period of time, became a world champion. Um, he's just a good dude, you know, and he actually manages, a couple of fighters I've just signed. Um, he and his partner, Jerry Casares. So like, I, I really am a, a big fan of his and, and I, I've always enjoyed Carl. I've also promoted a couple of Carl's fights. Um, you know, one of the things about my years with PBC and also my years um, where I've been sort of a free agent working with everybody, um, I promoted a lot of fighters, uh, you know, at least a few, a few times. And I've had the pleasure with working, of working with both of them. And let me ask you, as we're looking ahead to fights in the early part of the year, one that intrigues me quite a lot is um, Sergei Kovalev's return against Beck the Bully. Beck See, I, I, I'm, I'm going to pick Beck because there's no way on God's earth I'm going to pick Kovalev. <laughs> but I, on a personal level, Kovalev's behavior and the 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 episodes of violence, the episodes of of of, of uh, disrespect to women. And, and worse, you know, uh, abuse of women, um, uh, the racism, the hate. I mean, Kovalev can go fuck himself as far as I'm I mean, I, 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 but now this, that being said, 
it's an attractive matchup because I want to see him get his ass kicked and maybe the kid can do it. If Kovalev is a, is the Kovalev of old and the best Kovalev, you'd probably think he's too experienced and has too much for uh, Beck the bully. But, um, but I don't think Kovalev is the best Kovalev and I'm not sure he ever will be again. Um, I, I, I think he's rather undisciplined. Um, I think he has a, 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 a well-known problem with alcohol. Um, I, I, I'm going to pick Beck. And I want to see the fight. And I really want to see the fight because I dislike Kovalev. <laughs> and, and, and I've always said this, you know, a, a boxing is part of the entertainment business. So what you want is an event where people want to watch. Whether I want to watch because I love a guy <laughs> or because I hate a guy, I still want to watch. And I think that that fight's going to have sort of – like I don't think Beck's all that well-known, but I think there are a lot of people rooting against Kovalev in the boxing business. And I think among boxing fans, that's an attractive matchup. No, I, I like that fight. It is. It's a very good fight. So there are kind of signs of hope for the boxing community at the moment. You know, it's not been the best start to 2021, but as you said, the good things that we were looking for, the best fight, well, not the best fight, the best, but competitive 50-50 matchups are just starting to happen now. We have to get to the point where 50-50 matchups are the norm. Yeah. We really do. And that even includes prospects. I mean, it's fine to develop a prospect to seven or eight and oh, as you're increasing rounds, you're, you're doing gradual, uh, gradual levels of, 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 of better opposition. Like, I'm okay with that because the prospect does have to be developed, particularly one that didn't have 300 amateur fights. Guys that had two or 300 amateur fights, they don't need 10 or 12 fights of development. But when you get into that double digit sort of win category, let's find out how, how, how well people can fight. Because if a 10 and 0 fighter fights a 10 and 0 fighter and they turn out to be very evenly matched top prospects and they have a great fight, the guy who's now 10 and one, it's not the end of his career because people will realize, hey, he just had a great fight with another really good fighter. I mean, we have to get to the point where we're more like MMA, where the record is secondary to the quality of effort, to the quality of performance, to the quality of skill. And, and you know, there are a lot of like just, you know, there are loads. I don't want to pick on anybody, but there are heavyweight fights scheduled in the near future where there are guys fighting each other who have body, you know, incredible records, but have beaten nobody. One of the guys I'm thinking about has fought most of his fights in Tijuana. Um, and, and I'm not picking on the one person. I'm just making a point. And, he, and you know my, 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 uh, my line that's been uh, around for a long, long time about my, you know, the fact I can get a ham sandwich to 15 and up. Um, I don't want to see a lot of 15 and 20-year-old ham sandwiches. And I don't want to, on a service I'm subscribing to, or a pay-per-view I'm paying for, or a network I'm watching, um, I don't want to see a prime talent fighting a, a incredibly inferior level of opposition. Um, that might be okay in you know pro debut or first six rounder or first eight rounder, but when you get beyond that, we have no excuse for not making competitive matchups. And, and a fighter can lose and still be a great prospect. You know, if you put two top prospects in, they go to war and there's a close decision. In my mind, there is no loser. Completely agree. Really appreciate it. Oh, go on, Lou. You're going to say something. No, I was going to yell at Topolino, who's ripping my carpet apart. But <laughs> since we're going to say goodbye right now, I can go and stop Yeah, it. go, go uh, yell. All right. Danny, good talking to you as always. You. And uh, what what number was this one? Uh, what what week? Five. Are we? 45 so yeah. we'll be ha we'll be we're approaching the half century mark we have to do something special for our um year anniversary yeah yeah I th oh that's actually a good one we should we got to figure that out right. maybe even bring in a special guest or something yeah that's a good idea not not totally yeah. you know as special as she is as special as she is now we'll be someone who could speak <laughs> all right thank you buddy bye-bye take care